WOKB, Winter Garden, Orlando. You've just tuned into Women, Wisdom, and the Word with your host, Pastor Tehila, Minister Tamara Murray, Minister David Williams, Minister Bridget Norvell. And remember, you can never overdose on wisdom. Welcome, 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 welcome to another show, Central Florida and everyone else that's out there that has tuned in to this marvelous show. Welcome to Women, Wisdom, and the Word. I'm your host, Minister Bridget Norvell, and we have the lovely, handsome host here with us again. <laughs> and uh, Let's go ahead and do our round, round call, uh, our call. <laughs> okay. Um, Pastor Tahila is here this morning. Hey, hello everyone out there. Good morning, listeners. This is Minister Tamara. Happy to be here with you today. Uh, good morning. This is uh, David Williams. Happy to be here today and I uh, hope that you enjoy uh, the radio time. <laughs> well, these guys, you know, they're all into the morning. It's I afternoon. know, it's <laughs> afternoon. Yeah. It's not even brunch. It's yeah. lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Well, welcome everyone. Okay, we're, we're going to just get right into the topic. Last week it was hot and it carried on and we even almost ran over because <laughs> it was getting, you know, really mm. interesting. But um, and after the show, Pastor Tahila, this woman is just you want to talk about wisdom. Okay, so we're just going to get right back into the topic um, where we left off last week. And it was um, the women in training through wisdom and teaching mm, mm. and um, I'm going to hand it over to Pastor Tahila. Well um, perhaps I think the first thing that we need to do um, so that we can get a, a, a much clearer and better understanding of where we are going, mm -hmm. uh, wisdom okay. right, well the show is all about what, women, wisdom and the word, Yes. so um, let's look at wisdom and then move on into training because um, it is the training is going to take place in wisdom. Amen. Amen. Okay. Uh, so um, I've been taught and I believe that wisdom is skillfully applying the knowledge that you have uh, received, you know, uh, appropriately uh, to practical living. You see, um, everything that you've been taught um, through wisdom is you being able to um, apply it uh, to practical living, to practical situations. You know, uh, um, to put it simply, um, is to know how to speak, when to speak, or uh, whom to say it to, you know, when to say it, you know, and how to say it, and, and, and so forth. So that's how I, I, I kind of loosely define uh, wisdom, and also, for, you know, from being, having taught from my own mentors as well, those who mentored me, you know, and from reading, um, that's that's the way that I can uh, simply define wisdom right now. And what we're talking about is having uh, women being trained in being able to apply, uh, or rather to skillfully apply the knowledge that we have gained, you know, to practical living, to practical situations in the home, at work, you know, in our relationships, you know, at church, being able to apply uh, these things um, that we have learned. So I think um, that's, that's, that's how um, I can just put it in I, a nutshell. I like what you said, every aspect of life. That's right. Wisdom in every aspect of life. And we think we need wisdom in just one area, but it has to cover all areas mm -hmm. you're saying, right? It has to be across the board for mm -hmm. you to be effective. I've met people that are so, so uh, careful and, well, not careful, but um, they exude such wisdom in church, mm -hmm. but when it comes to the, you know to being in the home, it's a totally different thing. When it comes to being um, with family relationships, it's a totally different thing. So that means you're still lacking, you see. Mm -hmm. So um, I believe it has to be across the board. Okay. Yeah. And I think that's where we left off last week because mm, we had mm. a caller. They were talking about their where they are an executive. Mm -hmm. They make the money. 
Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the different things that why should they devalue their self for a man? Mm. And, you know, her her question was really um, interesting because that's what a lot of women feel. And as we left off last week, you know, we feel that we don't need a man in the home. Well, we need a man, but why should we submit to a man mm. I should say mm. Mm. so let's let's get into the conversation you are welcome um, around 12 I would say 1235 um, let's go ahead and we'll open up the lines for, to hear your questions 407-894-1680 that's 407-894-1680 if you'll like for people to listen to this conversation or even interact you're welcome to tell them to log on www.wokbradio.com that's wokbradio.com log on into on your internet you might have to run back into work but ladies let's start I see has to have have her um her 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 footnotes out. <laughs> I know she <laughs> is ready. She is ready. on uh, mm-hmm. what Pastor Taylor is saying. Um, what we're dealing with is ethics, mm-hmm. um, and to break that down, that is our behavior. Okay, um, we're dealing with ethics, and to break that down, that is our behavior and the motivation and the attitude behind our behavior and the things that we do the way that we act um and and we can do that both in and out of our teachings of who god is Mm -hmm. basically um in the home when our parents are raising us if we want favor with mom or dad and they require something of us we're going to be sure to do it because we want to please them and when we do that and we follow the principles and guidelines that are set up within our home um, you know, we have a particular study time when we're in school, when we're growing up. Before you can watch TV, you have to do this. So there are rules and guidelines that are set up within the home. And we learn early that if, if I do this, I'm going to gain favor and I'll have privilege. <coughs> so we do uh, develop in the home some standards, something that motivates us to act a certain way. What we want to do as Christians and as men and women and God is we want to set those guidelines and those standards according to biblical principles and biblical ethics. We want to use those morals. And to know those things, to know God is to know how to live that way, to live a righteous life. And the Word of God will guide us in that. And I'll just leave it there so someone else can take take it from there. Mm, okay. I, you know, I, I, I want to pull David into this. Yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. Well, um, you know, to add to the conversation, uh, it's very, um, it's very important that uh, you know that uh, women they do uh, learn uh, the wisdom as far as uh, you know, according to the Word of God, because uh, to take it to a, a deeper side, it's very important to uh, to your children and especially to young men, you know, because uh, you know when a young man sees you know that uh the mother in the home she's living a life according to a standard the way that a woman should be living her life then that sets him up for the future that you know when he does enter into a relationship it'll teach him how you know how to uh treat a woman and how he should be what he should expect from a woman when he has the opportunity to learn that in the home but when it's not being taught in the home then you know basically you know a young man goes out into the street and uh whatever the street teaches him then as far as dealing with women that's what is said in his mind and he believes that that is the right way but it's not the right way yeah um now i'm just reminded when we uh look at this um very essential thing uh called wisdom Mm -hmm. Um, you mentioned about the uh, executive woman and uh, who says, you know, why do I have to have uh, a man rule over me? I'm, I'm equal to him. I'm doing just as much as he's doing. And um, there's some wisdom in that when you look at it, you know. Uh, but um, let's break it down a little bit. You, there are different kinds of wisdom. Okay. 
you see there are different kinds of wisdom and i believe this particular woman that we're looking at and we're, what we are uh, commenting over uh, is applying i think the worldly wisdom okay she's living according to the worldly standards now in proverbs they talk i think it's proverbs they say the silly woman Mm. Is that would you? And, and we're we're not saying <laughs> we're just saying in biblical. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Okay. You know, yeah. <laughs> um, it's myself. like um, <laughs> it's like what um, Sister Tamara has just said. Mm -hmm. Um, she was speaking about ethics. Okay. And um, following um, uh, certain rules and standards. I. I believe that um, the ethics or the standards that we're going to follow now we are guided by the godly wisdom right um there is the uh, worldly wisdom mm -hmm. you know and then um there is the wisdom that we get from education you know what we get from academics okay. you know when we go to school when you see a doctor mm -hmm. they're definitely wise in their field okay. they've studied that uh, then we get uh, the wisdom that is demonic, that is sensual. Okay. That's not from God. Mm -hmm. You see, so there are different types of wisdom that are out there that people are following right now. Mm -hmm. But um, I believe on this radio station we are talking about the wisdom of God. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know that which comes from the throne room, uh, being guided uh, by the Word of God. I, I believe this kind of wisdom that we are speaking about gives you uh, the perimeters in how to operate just like what uh, Minister Tamara was uh, saying mm -hmm. about the ethics it is it, a guideline it's an anchor for us mm -hmm. you know it's uh, it's like a compass yes. if you like mm -hmm. uh, this wisdom that we're talking about uh, where you don't then uh, get lost or you don't get taken over uh, by situations and circumstances Mm -hmm. uh, this is the kind of wisdom that we're talking about. In the book of um, James, uh, uh, chapter 3, uh, let me just read the scripture. Okay. Yeah, yeah let me just um, read it to us. Uh, the Bible says, Who is wise and understanding among, among you? Let him show by good uh, conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. So I'm, I'm reading from the book of James, chapter 3, from verse 13. And now I'm on to verse 14. It says, but if you have bitter and envy, if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exists, confusion and every evil thing are there now. This is where um, I want to home in on verse 17. It says, but the wisdom that is from above is first what? Pure. Mm -hmm. mm. Then peaceable. Mm -hmm. Then gentle. Willing to yield. Mm -hmm. Full of mercy and good fruits. Without what? Without partiality. Uh, the Bible continues to say, and without hypocrisy. Um, so this is the wisdom that we are speaking about. The wisdom without uh, hypocrisy, mm -hmm. without partiality, mm -hmm. willing to yield. So when then we take it from the uh, perspective of that young lady who says, well, I'm a young executive, you know, I'm all these things. But she's not willing to yield. Mm -hmm. So that's not the wisdom of God. Okay. okay. So there's much training then that needs to take place. Okay. And I think that's where we see a lot of women that are single, mm. raising children without a father, mm -hmm. or even losing a husband. That's right. Because they're in marriages and relationships that they never took the time to increase wisdom within their life. And like you said, the worldly wisdom. I see you have... Um, I don't know if you want to touch on a book because you have a yes. a, a yes. author that is very close to your heart. And mm -hmm. tell me a little about the author. Well, her name is Dr. Yuna 
Guti. Okay. And she has been writing books on instruction and training and teaching women. And um, she has a book that she wrote. Uh, the book is called A Wise Woman. Uh, this is my manual. The, it, it, it's just incredible. Um, I, I love this um, author. I've watched her. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, she's mentored me uh, through her books. Yes. You know, and uh, she is just incredible. Her life is just um, uh, such an example uh, mm -hmm. to me. And, um, you know, as we go, continue, as we go on, the book is my footnotes. <laughs> okay. Amen. Okay. okay. It's the book. The is book is my footnotes. Is there yes. a footnote you want to touch on now? Yes. Yes, yes, there is. Um, she began to, uh, in the very uh, first chapter, um, she speaks of um, a heart attitude. A mm -hmm. hard attitude. Mm -hmm. And um, what we just read from uh, the book of James, it speaks of uh, yielding, mm -hmm. you see, uh, uh, willing to yield. So I believe that it's speaking about what? Submission, okay. being submitted to one another. And she breaks it down in such a beautiful way. Uh, there's a, uh, let me just quote from her book. Uh, it's from the first chapter. Uh, it says, for us to understand um, about uh, submission, we need to know uh, where this word comes, you know, where, where it derives from, mm -hmm. uh, from a Greek word, and um, uh, please excuse my uh, 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 um, so beautiful well, accent. Well, <laughs> <Your> beautiful <laughs> accent. Okay, uh, even the um, pronunciation. Mm -hmm. I'm not Greek, so it says "hupotasso." I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, which is H U P O T A S O. So this word is a military term used to describe military ranks where the military rank themselves according to the ranks. Those in a higher rank have people under them and those under submit to their rank. She speaks of submission as respect. Wow. Mm -hmm. You see, she, she, she speaks of submission uh, a, 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 as respect. And I just bless God that mm -hmm. um, I, I can't say I've... Um, reached it you know i'm not quite there yet but uh the little that i've been learning it has just been so helpful to me wow yes well we're gonna go into a station break and we're gonna sit, keep it right there i like that the submission because i think we have turned that word around mm. and made it disrespect mm. so we're gonna get into that conversation after this break Gospel 1680 WOKB. This is President Barack Obama. In the story of America, the greatest chapters are moments of challenge, when we see people serving their country and one another, volunteers who step forward into hospital corridors and church basements, along levees and fire lines. And the next chapter is yours to help write. Sign up to volunteer at usaservice.org. That's usaservice.org. Let's renew America together. A message from Renew America Together, brought to you by the Ad Council. Just a minute, Jen, I need to talk to you. Mom, I don't have time now, I gotta go. Jen, wait, Jen! Staying connected with your kids is tough. As a parent, you need to do whatever it takes, and the Boys Town National Hotline can help. What's Come on, Jen, let's go. let's go. I can't believe it, my mom just texted me. She knows how to text? Huh. Better see what she wants. From parenting questions to a family crisis, let the Boys Town National Hotline help you connect with your kids. Call 1-800-448-3000 or visit parenting.org today. You know that the ice cream scoop has the power to make a child smile and that by slowing us down, the traffic light can keep us going. You know that the golf tee brings friends together, that the mailbox keeps them connected. You know that the cataract laser helps you look to the future, while the pacemaker ensures that there's a future to be seen. You know that the lawnmower, the clothes dryer, and the elevator make life easier, that the blood bank makes life possible. You know that these things we count on every day started as ideas. But did you know all these ideas came from the minds of African Americans? Support minority education today so we don't miss out on the next big idea tomorrow. The United Negro College Fund, a mind, is a terrible thing to waste. 
please visit uncf.org or call 1-800-332-UNCF. Brought to you by UNCF and the Ad Council. Right now, nearly 30% of U.S. students aren't finishing high school. In many places, it's even higher than that. And fixing it is a responsibility that we all share. This is President Obama, and I urge everyone to take responsibility for encouraging the high school students in your communities, to support them, challenge them, and do whatever it takes to help them make it through. Do your part by going to BoostUp.org and giving a student the boost that's needed to make it to graduation. A message from the U.S. Army and the Ad Council. It might be the door alarm, or the new safety drain covers, the pool fencing, even the swim lessons. But the fact is, you can never know which safety step will save a life, until it does. Adding multiple safety steps to your safe pool practices can mean the difference between a close call and a call to 911. Simple steps save lives. To learn some new ones, visit PoolSafely.gov. A public service message from the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission, the American Red Cross, and YMCA of the USA. Gospel 1680 WOKB. Welcome back. See, we're always sisters, always friends. See, you're going to have me sing, Glenn. Why did you play that? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, please. Are you sure? (laughs) Wow. Welcome back. Welcome back to Women, Wisdom, and the Word. Before we get back into our conversation, we just have a few announcements for the Women, Wisdom, and the Word radio show. We have a few upcoming events we want to mention to you. So mm -hmm. you might want to grab out your pen and your laptop, your PDA. Do they still have PDAs out there? Okay, I think (laughs) I'm way back. Okay, your your iPhone, your phones. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) But you're going to love these upcoming events. Well, Pastor Tahila, you know, there is a, this is how I met her. Removing mm, yes. the mask. Yes. <laughs> and she has a wonderful support group where they get together mm-hmm. and they talk about removing those issues. Yes. You know, the makeup look casket fresh, as my daughter was saying. <laughs> 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 the clothes is uh, looking good, uh-huh. but you a mess on the inside. So, you know. Every first Saturday, they get together, and this, this um, well, next month will be June the 9th. They're going to get together, and I would like for you to contact Sister Annette for more information, uh, 724-630-8372. But it's time for us to let our hair down mm. and the things we cannot say to. And it's a great fellowship. Uh, I mean, yes. Awesome. We're not going to talk about food. the food. Oh, oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay. You know you're gonna. <laughs> let me give you that telephone number again because you, once we said food, mm-hmm. I know we sparked something in the women. You know, make sure you lose about ten pounds. Before you show up. I'm telling you, I have the evidence right here. Yes, yes, and, uh, yes. I, I was about to say I went to oh. see a weight loss doctor yesterday, uh, so <laughs> because I I'm removing the fat. <laughs> okay, it's not removing the mass. Yes, any removing before the fat. I okay. get to removing the mass, I got to remove the fat. Okay. <laughs> All right. So that's seven two four six three zero eight three seven two. And um, don't forget, Bridge. This is a free, free uh, event. Free event. Free uh, no in, in charge. Fact, it, it, it's lovely. It's yes. Lovely. Kick your shoes off. Do you think I can say this over the air? It's being held in my home. Yes. Mm. Yes. Mm. And yes. you know, how many people open their homes for this? And it's a very relaxed atmosphere. Bring yes. your yes. sister, bring your daughter. That's we it. We have women of every age group, of every um, social class, mm. you yes. know, young yes. mothers. We have professional women. We have single women, widow mm. women. Mm. Yes. People that are going through divorce. So we have women of every walk of life and this yes this is just for the ladies there's no gentlemen <laughs> present <laughs> okay, okay. Okay. No, say something. okay what what i would like to say is that um don't let babysitting be an issue because while the women are doing removing the mask the men take care of the children okay oh, yes. See? Yes. So and, she, and make sure they bring their swim trunks yes the yes, yes, yes yes so pastor tahila mm-hmm. has it covered for yes. the women of yes. removing the mask. And like you said, you open your home. That's right. That's open right. Open your home. And, yeah. and and believe me, th- it's a beautiful home. And she 
she she just opened it. It's like, okay, yeah. you're welcome. And they have those recliners. And when you're finished <laughs> eating, oh, you might catch some of us on the couch. Just, uh, <laughs> and we do have fun, ladies. It's not all serious. We have some yes. games and prizes. Yes. And so, oh, yeah, you know, I look we, forward we, to th- that. There's a lighter side of it. But you have That's to watch. That's my thing. Then. No, you have to watch Pastor Tahila. <laughs> because their Bible. <laughs> Yes, she wants all the all the gifts. Okay. Yes, it's, and they're Bible questions, so you know the scholar over here. <laughs> we might have to put her out the room. No, please, no. <laughs> you know, it's my chance to get those earrings. Um, uh, Minister Tamara, she's very good at that. She yes. is so good at that. She gets us um, prizes, you know, earrings, perfumes, and jewelry, and you know, this little knickknacks. That, you know, makes you feel special. So. It is just off the chain. I, mean, yes, I just want people to is, come. And um, we have uh, so many other ladies that we who will uh, be involved in it. Last month we had um, Sister Karen come yes. in. She did a wonderful Talk about skit. forgiveness. Yes. Forgiveness, yes. Yeah. And yeah. I think you've been staying on that theme a, a, a yes. lot. Because yes. um, and we have to get into that. Um, and then you have that number again where they can call. 724 630 but um, that forgiveness, it, it goes so far that mm, it's aw- mm. awesome. It's a topic that I think we could stay on for a while. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And I think um, on the 9th, we just might be still on it. Um, on the topic. I mean, what we're talking about, uh, the uh, deep tissue yes. issues. Yes, you know, deep I like that. Yeah. Deep tissue issues. <laughs> That's a Facebook moment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bridge, honestly. You're still, oh, no. <laughs> Facebook, look out. Deep, deep tissue issues. <laughs> We're going to have to start a book of Tehilla quotes. Yes, oh, okay. yes. <laughs> That's what we need to do. <laughs> no, please, no. Um, so, uh, well, we hope that um, as many of you ladies are out there, I will be able to attend. It's, yes. it's, it's, it's also a time for you to connect, meet friends, and, you know, um, just have the right friends. Yes. Amen. Because yes. there's uh, so much that is out there. But, you know, we have created and we have a, a, a group of women who really love God and fear God. Yes. Mm. Yes. Mm. And I am a witness to that. Um, it really changed my life, added on to my life. Let's get to the next upcoming event. That's Removing the Mask Present. Okay, I want to you know, do the drum roll. I think Glenn, if, if he, he could have gave me a little drum roll, and it's needed, is call. Okay, <laughs> he, he's, he's off. He's supposed to give me a drum roll. Okay. <laughs> I need a drum roll. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I, I, he's trying to find a drum roll. Ah, ah, there, there you go. Know. There you go. <laughs> the first lady support group. Okay. Yes. <laughs> we, you know, I, I God always download ideas, and I said, pass it to Hila. Do you think it's time for a first lady's pro- support group? You know, there's people in ministry mm, and. Mm. We, you know, just like mothers, we weren't ready to become a mother. Mm, Are we mm. ready to become the things in the roles that we were, or well, let's say chosen, mm, mm. but we, we've chosen the call, but do we know how to handle that role? That's well, right. yeah. we've started a support group. Yeah. First Lady Support Group, June 16th, we're taking you to Cap- Capitol Grill. Capital Grill Restaurant. I can't wait. Yes. I've never been yes, there. Yes, yes, well, tomorrow yes. Tomorrow. No, you're not a first lady. <laughs> <laughs> Glenn wants to come to Capital Grill. <laughs> if you see someone in disguise at the Capital Grill, you know it's <laughs> yeah. Glenn, okay? Hey, hey, I do believe they need security, though. <laughs> oh, okay. You know what, ladies? Okay, but for more information, call into the station, 407-894-1680. That's 407-894-1680. We will... Have it up on the website, get the 411.biz. We're updating our site. You're going to have more information on that, but I want you to put it down in your calendar 407 894 1680. Glenn will take your name and your information, but it is a first lady support group. You don't have to be a first lady. Pastor, That's what I want to explain. Go ahead. Okay. You got this. Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> well, explain about. Um, uh, being a first lady, or what is a first lady? Um, what we're saying is not just uh, 
I love know, Capital I Green. Know, okay. I, I know. I know. I can't wait to go. I've never been there before. And, you know, I'm he- hearing so much. The min- minute we mention Capital Grill. Grill. Yes. Everybody's going crazy. Can I tell you so, the best thing about Capital Grill? Oh, go ahead. The chocolate cake. Oh, my God. Okay, oh, so that's okay. the first thing we order. <laughs> oh, yes. It's that's about oh. Look at Glenn. six <laughs> inches <laughs> thick. Oh, oh my goodness. goodness. This man uh-huh. is going to come in disguise. Yeah, so you're not coming to Capital Grill. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to have your picture. And it's got a hazelnut uh, kind of thing going on in oh between the layers. Mm, mm, mm. Okay. Well, can I ask you real quick? In, mm. in England, I heard that you eat dessert first <laughs> before the meal. Oh, you guys, honestly. No, we don't. Uh, it's some country, but we're going to find out. <laughs> <so we can. laughs> you guys, no, we don't. Um, well, getting back to the first lady. Mm-hmm. Oh. You guys, I think we're going to get off, off topic. But okay. anyway, let, let's, do, let's, let's, do, real yeah, let's do this uh, real quick. We are not just speaking about First Lady as in terms of um, pastors' wives, mm-hmm. right? But we're speaking, we we want to uh, get together with women who are in ministry. Yes. You know, all yes. women uh, from all walks of life who are in ministry. But um, uh, it, it's, it's, it's a time where... First ladies can let their hair down and we can talk and mm-hmm. we can just come together. You know, being a first lady, sometimes it can be a very lonely place. Yes. You know, it can be a very uh, secluded place. Yes. You know, you have no one really uh, to reach out to and be able to uh, walk with. Mm-hmm. You see, so we've created this um, fellowship, if you like. Yes. Yeah, to give us all that opportunity. Mm-hmm. You see, the body of Christ really needs this, you know. Uh, once uh, there's, uh, as I said before, I, I've mentioned my mentor, um, uh, Dr. Yuna Guti. Uh, she has taught us and she always says that the woman is the backbone in the home and in the church. Once a woman is right, then it's right at home and it's, it's right in the church. Okay. Okay. So that's what we want to do. We want to get ourselves right. We want ourselves get ourselves on track mm-hmm. and um, learn from each other too. Mm-hmm. You know, that's it. learn from each other. You know, support one another. Mm-hmm. You know, when we're going through things and um, we want to uh, get a better understanding of our position. Because I believe also that um, being a first lady is a ministry in its in own. Its own. Mm. You know, it stands out on its own. Mm-hmm. You know, as yes. a minister. So. Um, yes. they, yeah. you, you have to deal with a lot of things that's and, and that's right. a whole nother conversation mm-hmm. the next one is um, and ladies get ready <laughs> preparing to be a wife August 23rd through the 26th. This is a soul <coughs> retreat. This is for Can single women. <coughs> no, it's for, oh, well, you're going to talk for the single women. Yes. But you don't have to be single. You don't have, you could be widow, married, but preparation. Yes. Training, training. Remember, we're, we're speaking about training. So yes, yeah, yes. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, single woman. Yes, <laughs> and, and I encourage all of the single women, and um, it, it's the, the different cultures that we come from. Mm. Yes, there are different things to be learned. That's it. Yeah. So you have to again, again. This gets back to our whole topic, what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. You have to be willing. Mm -hmm. You have to have a willing and a teachable spirit. Yes. To be able to take good counsel Mm -hmm. and godly counsel. And what that does, it produces wholeness, Mm -hmm. harmony, and consistency. Mm -hmm. And those are very fundamental elements to build a foundation for you to be able to have the right character, to be a good wife, to be a good mother. And those things are going to be taught at this uh, retreat. Yes, yes, and I wow. we we're gonna need a show to talk about what we're gonna be teaching at that soul retreat. We had our last well, soul maybe retreat. Next week. Yes, and maybe next week. If yeah. you see, if you saw Pastor Tahila and her deliverance team, la- the last soul retreat, it was off the chain. I, I, I don't know, Look, young people. If y'all don't sit on, <laughs> off the chain anymore, you know we're mature. <laughs> we're mature people, okay? But it was off the chain, and 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 I saw some boy. Mm, there was some deliverance going on, mm-hmm. and but it's time for us to prepare. And I can boldly say, going into my second divorce, I, I mm. thought it was time. 
It was mm. really time for me to learn how to be a wife again. Mm, mm. You know, I'm, we're so used to, I was used to being single even when I was married. Mm, mm, and mm. I was telling him now how I would, something. go ahead. Tell, go, okay, go, David. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Oh, I see uh, everybody I, looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, having a women uh, who have been single for a long time and finally that Boaz comes along, you know. Yeah, like me, tall, dark. Oh my goodness! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, uh, um, from a man's perspective, um, then you marry this. Well, like what you're going to be doing in in July, marrying this beautiful lady who's been single. You know, she's. Can I say her age over the radio? Yeah. Well, she's thirty something. She's thirty something. Something, <laughs> and um, she's been. You know, I. A breadwinner in her family you know she's been doing the work of the ministry all these things but now she's getting married yes you see so yes she has to submit so give us a little bit about um your perspective on that well you know? well my my perspective on it that uh, i would tell all the men out there that um you know if you have a woman in your life uh definitely don't be a hindrance for them uh you know coming to these events because you know, I have the mm. uh, the awesome pleasure of um of, of seeing uh, a different side of a woman that I that I've never known, and, and it was due to the fact that you know that she has been trained in the things um, in the home as far as uh, being able to to be prepared to be a wife. Mm, so mm, you know, mm. so I consider it um you know a great honor and a great opportunity. So um you know I want to say to the men, you know, don't sit back and uh, you know, have it set in your mind that it's just where, you know, your wife or your fiancé or whatever is going to take off for a weekend and go hang out with the girls and partying and all these uh, different things. You know, like I said, um, you know, give them the opportunity to uh, to be able to step up to the plate so that they can be that, that right and perfect wife that is to be uh, the woman that is supposed to be in your life. But. You know, something that really concerns me mm -hmm. is that there's so much um, focus on the woman. And mm -hmm. uh, I just feel there's not enough on the man. It is, you know, and, and you're so right because I think we're coming up with our next men's soul retreat. And I think <coughs> it's time. <laughs> Mm. I heard mm. Mm. Yeah, we're, mm. we're trying to to put someone a leader in charge of that, <clears throat> but not uh, pointing any fingers, <laughs> fingers <laughs> over here. Yes, yes, and, uh, and, and Glenn kind of quiet over there too. <laughs> but I think it's time for the men to get together and have that wise counseling from the older men. It, talk at Capitol, at Capitol Grill. Grill. <laughs> no, Glenn, not at Capitol Grill. <laughs> hey, 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 you know, Glenn, I think we can accommodate you. Okay, that. you know what? That's <laughs> the men thing. Yes, you can have it at Capitol <laughs> Grill. Yeah, we can do that. But I don't want to see a big, you know, we're going to have to supervise because they might I not. I am telling you. Okay, we're going to talk about that later. <laughs> <laughs> but, yes, it is time, Pastor, for us to concentrate. King up. That's right. That's King right. up. Yes. King up. Yeah. Well, um, explain a little bit. I think David explained a little bit. We had our uh, Easter resurrection, uh, resurrection uh, weekend conference. It was powerful. Yes. And what came out of that was king up. Men are usually taught and told to man up. Mm -hmm. You see. But um, we learned uh, during this weekend that we are to what? King up. Okay. Yeah, you know, in uh, in in reference to that, when they talk about kinging up, you know, I you know I want to say uh, to the men, you know, you know, it's time for us to uh, uh, stand up, you know, stand up and uh, be that man is, you know, to have that love uh, and compassion towards a woman in your life. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, a lot of men, you know, they they have taken their 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 tears and they have tucked it away and hidden it for so long so it's time for a man to uh you know be able to uh express yourself you know you have to express yourself as a man and not only that but uh it's time for men to stand up and be fathers to your you know be fathers to your <laughs> children you know be fathers to your children and uh and you know so you can 
uh, train them and teach them in the way that they are to walk. Yeah. Well, um, we just got. Yeah, Glenn. Glenn said. wrote a message. Yes. He said that, uh, <laughs> ladies. ladies, you might you might not be ready for a man to king up. Oh, we well, you know what? We if they ready. keep on listening to this show, mm. they're going to get ready. They're yeah. going to be trained. Exactly. So that's right. And I can speak, you know, for the single women. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know that you know the majority of of us are ready for that king. To yeah, come for the king. king up. Okay, I'm going to play devil's advocate. Okay. Yes, we we say we're ready, but when uh, look, Glenn pointing right at me. <laughs> <laughs> but when they get into our presence, yes. that 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 other little uh, alter ego come out. And we forgot everything that was taught. Oh, there he goes. He's typing again. <laughs> there he goes. Okay, <laughs> while he's typing, I'm going to say for all these events, I know you're like, where can I get this information? <laughs> www.getthe411.biz. We're working on other websites, but it's <laughs> www.getthe411.biz. Send me a note. Send him some information for these upcoming events, especially preparing to be a wife, um, August the 23rd through the 26th. Um, <laughs> okay, he's still typing. As soon as a, uh, go ahead, go ahead, uh, man. What did no Glenn? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, we touched well, the well, nerve today. It seems yeah, like see. I'm I'm being the spokesman for the men on yes. the radio today. Yeah. Is he said as soon as a decision needs to be made and there is a difference of opinion, we're but still that, ready for you <laughs> to yes, king up. That's we're where prayer ready comes for in. The, Right? That's what? where prayer comes in. Okay, I think we need to open the lines um, because there is two men and there's three women here. 407-894-1680. And you know this we always win, so. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's, there go the woman again. Well, I, I think go this ahead, is where Pastor. training comes in. Training. Yeah. Okay. Where, where training comes in. I remember last week, um, I, I, I was just so mad, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I went into our closet and uh, we had a revival, so I was mm-hmm. pretty busy, and we were preparing for our anniversary, 52 years uh, of ministry for our church. So I wanted my husband to be, you know, to be a, a little bit more organized. Mm-hmm. Usually I don't really notice, and I'm okay, <laughs> and everything is flowing. But when the pressure came, you know, uh-huh. um, he says to me, oh, I'm at work, so I need a change of clothes. Uh-huh. Yes, so, so you see, so I went into his um, wardrobe. It was a mess. It was a mess. Everything I touched, this is not ironed or this is not quite ready. It was a mess. So I was so upset. Mm -hmm. What did I do? As usual, I called my mentor, my counselor. Um, Well, uh, Pastor Burke. Um, I called her. Well, she's also my mom. So (laughs) (laughs) So I called her. She had to call mommy. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) So I said to her, you need to call him because she cancels both of us. Uh-huh. You need to call him. You need to talk to him. Everything is everywhere. So as usual, as calmly as she's, you know, she's so calm and she's so gracious. So she turned on to him and said to me, well, that's your responsibility. Mm. And it was like a s- cold water, like a slap on my face. And I was like, ah. So went back into that closet stomping my feet and mm-hmm. I began to take everything down what needed to go to the cleaners I took it to the cleaners what I needed to organize and sort out I began to wow. put it into place so training and you know what I mm-hmm. think there's some men here trying to want mommy number do y'all want mommy number <laughs> <laughs> I, I want her number <laughs> I want to know. My wife just washes and folds my stuff up and sticks it on the side. <laughs> Shoot. Uh, she turned around to wow. me and told me that is your that's your responsibility. Wait, you then I said to her, I said to him, I'm doing the house, wow. uh, the cooking, the washing. He never cooks. He never washes. He doesn't have to do all this. My mom just turned around and stuck to her guns and said, that's your responsibility. And that's where the wow. conversation ended and sure enough I had to go into that <coughs> closet <laughs> and pick things up yes then you I, know I in believe Pastor Burke is going to gain a lot of new friends <laughs> for sure yes so she is we, 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 we are ready yes. for the men to king up we yes. are ready I like what um, uh, Sister Tamara said we have to be willing mm-hmm. we have to be teachable you know, from, from when she said that, I reviewed the situation and I thought, yeah, it didn't just get to, 
be where it is overnight. I let it get to that his clothes, you know. That's it. So and that goes right back into our conversation. We just segue back into mm-hmm. our conversation submission. Mm. Exactly. That's it, yes. Now, Pastor Dehoda said something really, really interesting. I, I'll be very brief. She said respect before we went mm-hmm. on to break. Respect. And if we go back, the Bible says that the beginning of wisdom is the fear yeah. Of, of the, the Lord, Lord. Mm. which is to reverence God. Okay. So if we reverence to God, we will have a teachable spirit. Is to respect God. A That's humble it. Humble That's spirit. It. And talking about respect, now you said submission. Mm. Now you it, you said if I would have kept on top of things. That's right. The closet would have never looked like that. You would have caught that. Well, um, 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 another thing mm-hmm. that um, when we continue to read from the book of Titus, mm-hmm. it teaches us that to teach the, the, the women, the, the, you know, how to take care of their homes, how to take care of their husbands. Mm. So I, 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 got, I, I got caught there. I really got caught. Really? Because uh, then um, my first ministry is my husband. You know, mm. he is my first priority. And everything else then, you know, I, I follows after that. If I choose, I chose to be married. I was a widow, mm-hmm. and I chose this. This mm-hmm. is what I wanted, and therefore, it, it's a package. You mm-hmm. see, you cannot want the, the 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 good things out of being married, and you do not want to put the work to it. We have a caller on the line, but go ahead, Pastor. So oh. you know, I I had to listen. I I really really had to listen. Mm-hmm. You know, I I had to repent in myself. I had to repent in myself and go into that closet, begin to take out his things. I, I had to organize and ask him, what do you want to wear? Oh. You know, I, I regretted. I didn't say so graciously, oh. but I did it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Caller, I mm-hmm. see you're on the line. Her, um, your name is Precious. How are you today? Thank you for calling in to Women, Wisdom, and the Word. Do you have a question or a comment? Actually, I actually do have a, uh, a question. Hi, everyone. How are you? Hi. Uh, you've been having an interesting conversation today, um, asking about submission. Uh, in today's, uh, in, well, today, the woman of today, the young woman that I represent, we understand that submission is all about giving in and surrendering. But when we dig, uh, dig uh, further, we actually understand as what pastor was saying it's a matter of obedience and respect and we seem to have taken the other side where we think we are losing so we want to find out how best as young women can we learn the art of submission uh we want to learn how to submit the way the bible uh, has asked us to but at the same time before i give you the chance to answer i i think it's unfair uh, you can comment on that, that whenever there is a wedding, we have um, the pastor, the reverend, officiating the wedding, all the saying, wives, submit to your husband, which there's nothing wrong with that. However, they forget to continue, uh, because the Bible continues uh, to say something else after that. Uh, and I, I believe it actually says that, Wives submit to your husbands as well as husband loves you. Love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. So in that respect, we seem not to balance it. And I believe that when we are able to submit to our husbands, it's a cycle that okay. comes from being loved by the husband. Okay. Pastor, you want to take that? Yeah. Um, well, I, I, I hear what you're saying. Um, it, it seems to me, I could be wrong, it seems to me that um, you're willing to submit mm-hmm. only if he does such and such and such. It's like you, you, you have set um, certain um, yardsticks, if you yes. like. Mm-hmm. I will submit mm-hmm. if he shows me. I will submit if mm-hmm. he does. The Bible says submit. Yes. That's all. Submit. He will do his part, but you must do your part. And and we call that condition. Mm-hmm. Yes. Instead of conditional. Unconditional. 
submission. Mm-hmm. Right. Yes, that so is. that's conditional submission that as is. conditional love. Right. Yeah. If you do this, I then, would do that. And yes. if we leave it to God, God will deal with whomever, the husband or the wife, mm-hmm. that's not fulfilling their responsibility. That's right. Mm-hmm. So just do what you're, you're, exactly. you're, what you're supposed, supposed to, to do, do, you know, and then God would uh, do the rest. One thing that I am, um, I'm learning and I've learned is that um, I'm not I'm not the one who's supposed to change my husband. God does that. Mm, oh, I just that's saw not man my raise oh, up. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Minister okay. David raised up out of that chair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want I, I wanted to comment on um you, you know on uh, on the comment that she made you know in reference to well you know they say well what the woman should do and. In reference to well, the woman should do this and the man should do that. You know, uh, you know, going along with passion, what everybody is saying is that, you know, uh, both the man and the woman need to take the role of fulfilling their responsibility. Don't be so concerned about the other individual that is to fill their part. You do your part, and mm-hmm. you know, God will take care. God will take care of the rest Amen. of it. You know, and and that's mm-hmm. what that's what causes people to fall in the conflict because it's like you you know i i, I want to know what you're going to give me before before i give to you and Tip you know and and that's, that's what it. that's mm-hmm. what causes a lot of people uh not to be in line with the things of god because you know as you notice the way that god works it's not that okay well if you do this for me i'll do that for you no he gives you a mandate to do something you know, so you have to have the faith in the same way you have the faith in God, then you should have that same faith in your relationship. That's right. It, it made me go back to the story of Jonah. Mm. Mm. A lot of us going into the belly of the <laughs> whale for no reason because we yes. want to do what we want to do and not what God According told to us our to own do. Terms. That's it. Yes. That's you it. See. So, you know, th- this is really, this is really, um, Interesting, uh, interesting uh, conversation, and yeah. it could go on and go on. I think I see Glenn getting ready to type up something, but um, go ahead, Pastor. I, yeah, we have a few more minutes, and, uh-huh. and after that, we're going to just touch back on the, the actual upcoming events. And but go ahead. Yeah, um, I will go back again to uh, submission. Mm-hmm. Um, as I said, uh, uh, this last weekend, I I was busy, guys. I was really, really busy. But I had to submit. Mm -hmm. I really, really just had to submit to the word and submit to instruction, Mm -hmm. uh, submit to the counsel that I got, you see. So we have to be taught. I want to suggest something to the listeners. I have had the opportunity to sit with this woman for a few months now. I would love for you to come over to her home for just <laughs> one week. <laughs> one week. Oh, my goodness. All right, Pastor. We're going to have the half of Orlando at your house. Yeah, okay. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? This was a great show, and Pastor said something. She touched on something. Preparing to be a wife next week. We might just put a show together mm. and talk about preparing to be a wife and what it is that we do to prepare. We're going to talk about that, but... Log on to www.get411.biz for more information for upcoming upcoming calendars, removing the mask. We will have a, a, a link to Pastor Tahila for an faith site. But we really enjoyed this time. Tune in every Wednesday from 12 to 1 p.m. Let everyone know about women, wisdom, and the word. Ladies, we can never overdose. Say it, Pastor. We can never o- overdose on wisdom. <laughs> 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 oh, my goodness. I just got a text. I know we're running late. Uh-huh. Hi, Barbara. I love you. <laughs> yes, I'm coming to see you very soon. <laughs> love you, love you, love you, and God bless. God bless. Thank you for tuning in to Women, Wisdom, and the Word, a word of wisdom for all aspects of life. And remember, you can never overdose on wisdom.